So now that we've talked about different types of microphones and audio, well, they got to get plugged in and connected to your equipment somehow. So I want to talk a little bit about the various types of audio and video connectors that we're going to be using. So basically, you've got to put plug A into slot B somewhere, somehow. And when you're dealing with a lot of connections, uh, there may be a wide variety that uh, will come into play, whether it's audio and video, as you can kind of see as the, the back of this uh, instrument that allows multiple video sources for different types of connections. So the first type of connection that we're going to have is audio related. And this is a uh, this is a industry standard cable known as the XLR. It stands for um, Canon's X series connector. It has a locking tab and a rubber ring to kind of seal everything off. So I can kind of see there's like a little thumb button that you can push and it's designed to lock into the, the cable. So once they meet, you can't pull them across you can't separate them unless you hit that button they'll easily pull apart so this is the professional audio cable that our connection that you're going to see in a lot of the industry whether it's a simple microphone or you're connecting um, audio visual equipment together now this type of connector is what's referred to as a balanced connector and if i look inside the plugs i can see that there's usually three pins there's like an audio a positive a negative and even a ground so this is connection is going to kind of help eliminate any type of interf interference that's going to come in from uh, electrical surges or things that's happening around the, the cable or the connection. Um, so they're going to help reduce that electronic noise or that interference, especially on long runs. These connectors are very robust. I have seen cars roll on over top of um, these plugs when they're connected into each other and they didn't break. So the other nice thing about the XLR cables is that they can be used both for an analog audio signal or they can carry a digital audio signal as well. So they're able to kind of separate and make it through the evolution of technology when we shifted from traditional analog into digital. And I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. So one plug that you might be familiar with is what's known as the TRS, the tip ring sleeve. And this is a uh, also a balanced connection because it's able to separate like a positive, a negative, and a ground. And this is just, you know, your typical little, uh, like I've seen a lot of these on headphone connections. And so they're able to pull a lot of um, information and they're kind of universal and they're very simple to use. You would just like plug it in and pull it out. In the case of um, this picture, I have an adapter on this TRS so I can uh, change the plug from a smaller to a larger. So these can be used for a balance and they can have um, multiple rings on them to even have like a left, uh, a left audio, right audio, um, ground and things like that. They're pretty rugged. They last pretty well. Um, but they're not as rugged as the XLR. So the XLR is still going to be the industry standard for professional audio. The, the TRS or the tip ring sleeves are more of your consumer grade home end user. Um, but they also have, um, there's like many specialty configurations. So I've seen some that have just um, one ring in the middle. So it's going to be like a left or a right as opposed to two rings. I've seen some with three or four. So you, um, depending on the needs, the cable can be adjusted. But that also means it's not necessarily cross compatible. So if you have a cable that has four rings in it or three rings, then it may not fit a receiver or a receptacle that's only designed for one ring so that may give it too much information and it won't properly work the way that you're hoping to because the cable and the receiver are incompatible now one of the things that um has kind of changed is that technology will cause an evolution in the way we perceive things so back in 2016 um apple the manufacturers of the ever popular iphone cameras uh, decided that they were going to make a change to the devices and what they wound up doing was they got rid of the headphone jack that was in the bottom of the camera and so this caused a lot of people to change the way that they listen to audio so a lot of them had to um, get away from traditional earbuds that use the um the trs uh, adapter and then they wound up picking up other things like uh, wireless headphones that use bluetooth technology so apple was uh 
Apple thought that this would be a good way to transition the way they do audio. With the TRS, you only have a limited amount of information that can go through the cable. In this case, it could be left audio, right audio, and that's about it. But if you're using a wireless technology like Bluetooth, you can send a lot more information. You can send in like a, a representation of surround sound, five speaker sounds. You can have different channels for high level audio, mid, low. You could also have uh, separate channels for bass and all that can go through a wireless connection connection, whereas the TRS couldn't quite pull that off. So that basically created um, a change in the way we did audio. And so they felt that a wireless technology or even um, using their proprietary cable, lightning cable, has more channels for sending audio through. And so they've uh, kind of shifted a lot of people over to wireless headphones or possibly even um, wireless earbuds that you would put in to record audio. So the audio connections are changing and that also means that there's technologies that we've had in the past that um, have moved on and they're no longer being used. Now, one of the things I talked about earlier was with the TRS, the tip ring sleeve, in that this smaller cable is what's known as an eighth inch jack. Well, there's one that's even bigger called the quarter inch and my head is right in the way. Um, so you can kind of see that there's the smaller plug, the larger plug, and even with the quarter inch, um, they may have different types of plugs. So again, uh, this one on the right, I can see that there's only like one ring that's separating it into two parts. Uh, over here, I've got two rings that are now separating it into three parts. So uh, the quarter inch jack is not primarily used for headphones, um, but it was also used for like electric guitars so they could plug into their transmitter or their receiver or their amplifier. Um, otherwise, the quarter inch jack really isn't used much in modern day professional audio, whereas they've replaced it with other types of things, whether it's fiber optics or um, just a network cable that can do audio as well. Now, one type of audio that have been around for a long time is what's known as the phono plugs this is also known as the rca plug as they were the main proprietor of this technology and this basically consisted of two parts you had the tip that had uh one type of data and then you had this metal ring that had another channel of data and the two didn't touch unless until you plug them into a receiver now this is um mainly used in consumer electronics because their quality wasn't as good as XLR or other more sophisticated types of cables. Um, these were also called unbalanced because you only had like a positive and a negative or a left and a right. There was no ground. So they were more susceptible to electronic interference and that could uh, cause issues for what you were recording. Um, and one of the things that made these things popular was that you could easily color code them. You could change the color of the casing to fit whatever you need. And with consumer electronics, red, yellow, and white became the standard for um, these plugs. And for the most part, white and I'm sorry, yellow indicated this is where your video connected. So you could go from the video on one connection to video on the color. And because they were both yellow, you knew you had the right connection. And then red and white were denoted for like left channel audio, right channel audio. So to get all of this video and audio, you needed at least three cables to pull off um, a decent video signal. Now, when we're dealing with connectors, we also deal with even uh, the same type of connector is going to have a different interface, a male versus a female for whichever uh, end you need. So an XLR would have a, uh, a male that would have... Um, three prongs or a female that would have three holes. Likewise, the RCA would have the the ring and the tip and then there would be uh, a ring and a tip for the female. Same thing with the uh, TRS. You would have a tip and then you would have a female uh, receiver in. So depending on your needs, you might also have to change the type of connector that's going on to the end of your cable. Now, let's take a look over at video. And so with video, there is, again, a wide variety of different types of plugs. Uh, in the RCA, you can see there's a whole spectrum, black, red, yellow, white. So these were kind of universal. Um, we had the TRS. You had things like microphone jacks. Um, and then you also have uh, newer things like SD, uh, sorry, S-Video, uh, Display Ports, HDMI, Thunderbolt. So there's a lot of variety of connectors going on, especially with digital 
audio and digital video. And that's going to lead me to a new type of signal called an SDI signal or a serial digital interface. Um, it's not so much this cable that I have pictured, but it's the information that's traveling through the cable. An SDI is digital. Instead of transmitting pulses of energy to represent audio or video, it's now transmitting data, ones and zeros, through this cable. And with this, you're able to transmit like a high definition, a standard definition, a 4K definition video. You can send uncompressed video with its raw quality, and you can do that with audio embedded inside of it. So all of this signal is... Um, your audio, your video, maybe um, subtitles and things like that. So this can handle not only the traditional 1080p and lower resolutions, which have been the industry standard for a while, but it can also include things like 4K, 6K, 8K because of the data and the, um, the ability of that cable to transmit that type of serial digital um, media. Now, the type of cable that we just showed is what's known as a coaxial cable. And it's using connectors, uh, which are kind of like a little twist lock connector called a B and C, a bayonet nail Conkleman connector. And it's uh, a really, I like the cable connector because uh, your plugs have these little metal hooks on them and they'll go into the, the sleeve. So they'll go in and then you can twist it and it locks and i think this is a very simple and a very good connector so that it doesn't accidentally just pull across if you actually tug on it a little bit um and so this connector has been around for quite a while and it's been used for carrying traditional uh video signals whereas the rca and xlrs did most of your audio um this was a, this is the standard video cable that we have um in professional television production so and the fact that we're now switching it over to the sdi signal as opposed to the analog signal we're able to send a lot more information along with it now uh, like I talked about earlier, you had the RCA cables that had the red, the white, and the yellow. Um, so you had three different cables for your consumer needs. Well, that has been replaced with a newer type of cable called an HDMI cable, which stands for a high definition multimedia interface. And so with this cable, you've got a relatively small plug that has a bunch of different channels in it. And these channels are able to transmit digital information. So not just like an analog signal, but digital. And this is what's going to give you that high definition, the 4K, the 6K, the 8K with surround sound or seven speaker surround sound, including things like sub caption, um, different languages. And with the HDMI, it's become a very good consumer cable in that there's only one way you could plug it in because it has a wider top and a narrower base, or if you flip it over. Um, so it can only plug in one way, but also everything's now in one cable. So that's gonna make things a lot easier to move. And with HDMI, they have different sizes. So you have the full uh, normal size that we see in a lot of consumer electronics. You have things like the mini HDMI cable that could be used in smaller devices like smaller decks or camcorders. And then there's even the HDMI micro which can be used for very small configurations. So I've seen the micro used um, a good bit in the small little uh, cameras called the GoPros. That's about, um, you know, size of a, a box of matchsticks. And so because of that, it needs um, the smaller interface to pull the video out of it. So HDMI is now the new standard for consumer grade electronics, replacing the RCAs. Speaking of which, there has been a lot of connectors that have been replaced by newer types of media or newer types of connectors, just as the HDMI replaced the RCAs. So that was one of the, um, uh, the ones that got replaced. Now, when uh, home consumer media was evolving and the first type of connector they had was what was called composite. And that's where they fit all of the video for a signal into a single cable. Well, some people wanted a better quality looking audio. So they were able to take the video and break it into three cables. And those three cables are using the same colors of the light spectrum, the red, the green, and the blue.
an RGB connector. So instead of trying to have um, all the signals using a third of their bandwidth in one cable, they could break it up and use three times the bandwidth of a composite in their own channel. And so by breaking it down into different ones, so you'd have like luminance and then you have chrominance, chrominance to pull these off, the component gave you a better quality audio uh, video. Now, they did not have audio. So you still had to have two more cables for left channel and right channel to provide your uh, video. So one of the ways they found to kind of change that um, was a type of cable called an S-Video, and I'll mention that in a moment. Uh, but these, uh, the components, like I said, um, were three separate cables, red, green, and blue. Whereas most of your standard home consumer video used what was called composite. And this is all of your video squeezed down into one connector. And so um, you could even do that through a BNC cable that could do a basic composite um, video. But again, the video was compressed and it didn't look as good as the components. But the component cables didn't really catch on much in home consumers because there was just a bunch of more cables for people to deal with and they weren't quite sure how to handle a lot of that. So one of the solutions was known as an S-Video cable. And with this S-Video, this had one plug that had these four little wires in it. So you would have things like um, your red, your green, your blue, and even like your brightness. And it had like basically like a little plastic plug that you could make sure it would line up into your um, your TV or your video deck. And one of the things about it was these cables were extremely thin and extremely delicate. So if your cable was just a little bit off and you tried to plug it in, you could bend one of those cables, wind up breaking it, and you couldn't replace that part. You had to replace the entire cable. So S-Video came out for a short while after um, to replace the component plugs and it did work for a few years until um something better had come along in the form of the hdmi cable had come to replace it now one type of connector that we had also seen a lot in home use is what's known as the f connector and the f connector is basically a cable that has the copper threading exposed and a screw casing around it so you just kind of line the thread in and then you would sort of twist um this piece locking it on so this was uh used a lot for cable television receivers and tuners that it was a little bit easier for people to uh, manipulate and understand because they could understand a simple screw connection as opposed to the bnc where you had to like line up the little um the little bolts push it in and twist um and those connectors were probably a little bit more expensive so this was a little bit simpler and cheaper connector to use and so when we started transitioning from traditional set set top boxes to types that plug in through internet and use hdmi this x connector was um pretty much retired now another type of connector um came in a little came in long before hdmi and this was the first truly digital type of interface and this was known as firewire the standard also known as ieee 1394 uh, it stood for the institute of electronical and electronics engineers and this was um a cable product 1394 that they gave to it it was developed in the 80s and 90s and it was able really the first time to transmit data across the cable as opposed to an analog signal and so uh, one of the first people to really pick up on this was going to be Apple Computers, and this became the cable for video computer editing, also known as nonlinear editing. And this cable kind of um, was comparable at the time to the USB cable. And so once uh, Firewire came out and people were able to plug their cameras into a cable, plug the other end into a computer, and the computer can now capture these analog signals and convert it, um, the PC world worked on something similar called the USB, a universal serial bus. And the USB became a cable for like uh, almost any type of data transmission. It could be a mouse, a keyboard, a camera, like what I'm using right now. It could also be, um, you could have a receiver for uh, data storage, so like a thumb drive. You could also use it for um, other types of configurations, printers, lights, microphones, things like that. And so um, there was kind of like a, a battle going on between Firewire and USB. And at the beginning, the Firewire 
data rate was a lot faster than USB 1. And then USB evolved to uh, version 2. And it was just a little bit slower than Firewire, or about the same. And then when USB 3 came out, uh, the speeds had far bypassed what Firewire could do. And also, it was becoming more universally accepted by the computing world. And so, uh, in the late 90s, Apple decided to drop the Firewire technology in place of the universal serial bus or the USB. And now we've moved on to USB 3.0, uh, USB 4, which is also called USB-C, is a type of connector that can not only do massive amounts of data, it can also transmit electricity and power. So you can use a USB to charge a computer as opposed to just using it to try and charge a smaller device like a phone. So when you look at the back of the television, for the longest time, you'd have a wide variety of connectors. So your good connectors were your basics. You had your component, and then you had your left and right audio, in this case, white and red. Uh, the component also moved on to uh, the S-Video. I can see with the four cables and the plug. But it was good. If you wanted something better, then you could break those signals up into three separate cables, your R, your G, and your B. Likewise, you could also, you would still need your audio for left and right. If you wanted something that was a far better quality, then you'd be doing the HDMI, which would have um, embedded audio, embedded video, and all the information going into one plug. You would have um, the ability to plug in a computer monitor and a computer audio, so you could turn your television into a giant screen. Uh, we've also got the ability on the right side to send audio out through fiber optic or through left and right channels to a sound bar or an audio amplifier. In the upper right, we have that F connector that could receive uh, over the air antenna signals or a cable antenna, si antenna signals. And that has been kind of replaced with the HDMI plug. Now we're also getting into the area of this upper left where you can even plug in a network cable into a television. Televisions are moving into the realm of smart TVs to where they don't just display audio and video, they actually have a computer inside and can handle different types of programs. And a lot of that comes in the place of different streaming digital channels from the internet. So things like Netflix, Amazon, um, YouTube, all these different types of video channels that could stream through a digital source from the internet into your TV. Your TV is now getting the ability to play. So that's kind of a look at what all we have for uh, types of um, connectors that are going to be uh, connecting your different types of audios and video sources. Some of them have made uh, survived the test of time and transition from an audio to a digital in the realm in the form of like the XLR cable or the SDR or the BNC cables or the coaxial cables to help transmit not just analog and digital. But because technology evolves, there sometimes comes a point when a connector is not as good as it used to be, or it's not as powerful, or there's something better. So we were able to see like the RCA connectors were pushed aside for HDMI. We were able to see that the TRS connectors for like headphones were pushed aside for a wireless technology like Bluetooth. So in the future, we'll see what more they have as far as the ability to connect different types of devices. We may get to a truly wireless situation where uh, things will just match up and sync up flawlessly. Not quite there yet, but as we move on, technology will